Well, it's finally happened. I'm selling out. I'm doing a review of a new game. A new PC Engine game? Enter the universe of FX Unit Yuki, the Henshin Engine. Based on a webcomic by self-proclaimed PC Engine lover Sarumaru, FX Unit Yuki is a modern attempt at recreating the kind of gameplay we loved so much in the 16-bit era. And what better way to do so than to develop it for a 16-bit console? The Turbo Graphics, or PC Engine CD, depending on which region you fancy. Actually, FX Unit Yuki was pretty much the first homebrew for an old console I learned about when I started this channel, and simultaneously became involved in social media and the online gaming community with its overflowing positivity. Well, that and Paprium. But I only pre-ordered one of them, and it turned out to be the right decision. The story of FX Unit Yuki, told in between levels with still frame anime cutscenes, is a testament to fanboyism and nostalgia for the 16-bit era of gaming that would make even High Score a girl proud. It centers around Yuki Shirokawa, a girl who has recently been recruited as a beta tester for a major game developer called JEC, which has absolutely no relation whatsoever to NEC, the real-life company that actually developed the PC Engine. In this universe, Beta testing involves having your nervous system connected to a computer in order to transfer your consciousness into the game program, and Yuki quickly discovers that she has a natural talent for the job. Unfortunately, someone at JEC's biggest rival company, the SG Corporation, has been attacking their game programs, and inevitably, Yuki dons the FX unit suit to go into battle and defeat the viruses invading JEC's games. Of course, no story about cute girls doing battle in futuristic suits of armor would be complete without a slightly comical rival for the main character to exchange silly one-liners with. And this is where we meet Mega... <coughs> Sorry. I mean, Ultra Drive Jenny. She's cute, she's tough, and nothing brightens her day more than insulting the protagonist. The bulk of the game is a 2D action platformer with you controlling Yuki in traditional left-to-right fashion. Your standard attack is a sword slice, but as the game progresses you gain several new abilities in predetermined spots by picking up power-up chips that look suspiciously similar to PC Engine HU cards. Although, I'm sure it's a total coincidence. You get a charge shot, a slide which also damages enemies, and a very useful double jump. In addition to platforming levels, however, there are a couple horizontally scrolling shooting stages as well revealing FX Unit Yuki as a surprisingly ambitious endeavor. Since the main characters are essentially personifications of game consoles, it shouldn't come as a surprise that most of the levels are homages to other well-known games from the era that inspired this one. After the initial training area, you'll find yourself in a world highly reminiscent of the early Wonder Boy games, or Adventure Island, which secretly is a Wonder Boy game. This is where Yuki's sharp humor or maybe unintentional humor, becomes evident, as she makes fun of the seemingly remedial graphics in her current assignment. The first shooting stage takes place inside a game called Satin 100% and features Yuki riding on a broom. Hmm, now what does that remind me of? After that, you'll find yourself in the world of Castle Vampire Z, with endlessly respawning bats, candles that reveal items, and flying Medusa heads. It's funny, if I didn't know any better I would almost think it was a reimagining of a level from Castle of... Nah. Interestingly, the very last level is completely unlike the others. It has you on an auto-scrolling highway with three planes you can switch between to avoid enemies and obstacles. In fact, the gameplay is very similar to another PC Engine game that I reviewed way back in my infancy on YouTube, Honey on the Road. Although, I honestly have no idea whether the similarity was intentional or not in this case. I don't want to give everything away, but you get the point. It would take a very passionate group to fund and create a PC Engine game of this scale in the modern day, and accordingly, it's heavy on fan service. I mean, it basically is one long stream of fan service. And it's quite a delight. The detached, 
innocent personality of the main character is truly likable, and the story is reminiscent enough of other games and anime from the early 90s such that most players will quickly find themselves at home in its universe. This is the area where FX Unit Yuki stands out from other modern games made for old consoles. A worldview containing characters with defined personalities and congruency between the story and gameplay. Something to keep in mind is that FX Unit Yuki started out as a webcomic, one that clearly takes influence from a specific brand of Japanese manga and anime. Accordingly, the quips and humor are adorably cringy, and for players who aren't familiar with this little universe, it could feel... awkward. You'll come across classic prose like, Oh my god, I can't even. Sure thing, Nobu Chops. Hot dog. And you did not just call me fat. Revel in literary genius like So Ridic and Honey spelled H-U-N-N-Y. Despite all this, the story takes some serious turns in the second half and transitions into a tense build-up toward the final showdown. So far, I've pretty much only talked about the presentation of FX Unit Yuki, what it feels like as an aesthetic experience. But I'm guessing what most people really want to know is, is it a well-made game? So let's get down to business. First of all, Yuki controls more or less perfectly reliably. The jump momentum is slightly floaty, but in a user-friendly way that allows as many small adjustments in flight as you need, and the walking speed is satisfyingly brisk. The hit detection of your sword attack is somewhat vague, but again, in a way that almost always benefits the player. I definitely have no complaints here. Possibly, my favorite thing about controlling Yuki is the fact that the double jump doesn't have any specific timing the button has to be pressed for the second jump. It can be done at any time. Whether you're ascending or descending is irrelevant. This is an extremely liberating feeling for someone like me who's accustomed to the harsh, pinpoint timing required for double jumping in games like Revenge of Shinobi. I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed with the graphics in FX Unit Yuki. Most of the levels are reimagined levels from other games, so they have to work within that frame, but they're all highly convincing without being exactly the same. And the artwork is at the higher end of action games on the PC Engine, even compared to games released during the console's lifespan. Level 1 keeps things pretty simple because, well, it's supposed to be Wonder Boy, but the Castlevania-like backgrounds in Stage 3 are honestly a lot more detailed than I was expecting, and Stage 5, which recreates a respected PC Engine shooter that I'll leave unnamed, has an evolving background that impressively takes advantage of the PC Engine's color palette, regardless of what generation it's from. There's little here that reveals Yuki to be an indie game made with crowdfunding. Getting into the nitty-gritty. The actual platforming and enemy placement in FX Unit Yuki keeps you busy enough, but it isn't particularly challenging. Actually, most of the game is extremely easy for anyone with any reasonable amount of experience playing 2D action games, at least in normal mode. There are some moving platforms and enemies placed near ledges, but nothing that a charge shot won't clear the path of. To be fair, the first playthrough will require learning a couple of the quicker enemy patterns, like wolves that require two slashes to kill. But really, a good 90% of Yuki's platforming is a breeze. This is partly because of how smooth the control is, and partly because there aren't many deeply thought out platforming situations. One of my biggest complaints is that the only time I ever felt FX Unit Yuki was difficult was when enemies take cheap shots at you. For example, enemies that fly at you right after you've dedicated yourself to a jump over a pit, enemies that shoot from behind while you can only shoot forward, or enemies that shoot from off screen. Unfortunately, most of the sections where you'll take damage can only be overcome by remembering exactly what's coming so you can attack before the enemy appears, which often consists of letting off a charge shot and running after it. In stark contrast to this, the boss battles are almost all really well made, with patterns that require some learning and the skills to keep up with them consistently. The boss of Stage 3 is a bit of a sudden jump in difficulty, but again, the patterns are reasonable with defined safe zones, while also requiring timing and judging the indicators of his next move. There are only a couple little parts where it seemed like a boss did something unavoidable, most notably the final form of the last boss, which is just a total free-for-all. But that can be seen in plenty of other 16-bit games. And once you realize it and stop trying to look for some non-existent strategy to gracefully avoid his attacks, 
it's not a huge deal. If you're willing to play that far. And this leads us to FX Unit Yuki's most glaring problem. For the first few levels, you're hopping along and having a good time, getting lost in nostalgia and smirking at all the little references to games of the past that we loved. And then, you get to the second half of stage 4, which is an underwater section. Yeah, most underwater stages in old games aren't as exhilarating as the regular platforming areas are, but this one is particularly devoid of excitement. You have to find and hit four switches to open the door to the exit. There's no attacking while you're swimming, and very few enemies. It just seems to go on and on with nothing to do but swim through empty corridors. It's just really jarring compared to everything that happens in the game up until then, and frankly, tedious. Sadly, this only serves as a warm-up for what's to come next. Any gamer acquainted with the TurboGrafx library will be super hyped to see the game Stage 5 is based on, but the excitement will fade shortly. Because after grabbing a couple power-ups, you'll be pretty much invincible and will just have to wait through the same 3 or 4 enemy patterns again, and again, and again, and again. The stage goes on for ages! On my first play, I thought the game may have glitched and got stuck in an endless loop until the background finally changed. I literally checked it with a timer, and this horizontal shooting stage is 11 minutes long. With absolutely no evolution in enemy attack patterns, it is truly a chore. Stage 6 isn't much better. Possibly a nod to Shubi Bean Man or Mega Man, the majority of it has you running through buildings and jumping across rubble while enemies run around at the bottom. The point is to stay up high so you don't have to deal with them. But with so much going on, slowdown is inevitable, making this already needlessly long stage nearly as tedious as the one before it. If there were unique, tricky jumps and other gimmicks being introduced in each section, that would be completely different. But as it is, you're just mindlessly hopping for what seems like forever. And why do I have to fight the same mid-boss twice? It's obvious that, at a certain point, the developers decided they were simply too far past the deadline and the game would have to ship as is, regardless of whether they were able to implement everything they had really wanted to. These problems don't make FX Unit Yuki unplayable or a bad game, but there's a huge contrast between the first and second half that will be obvious to even newcomers to the genre. You may have noticed that I haven't said anything about the music yet, and that's because I've been saving the best for last. FX Unit Yuki's soundtrack is legendary. The music was handled by a Swede who goes by the name Garbled Waves, and not only does the music find the perfect balance between that retro, synthy sound and modern clarity, but the melodies truly embody everything we loved about creativity in the 8 and 16-bit eras. These are songs that will stick with players for years to come. In fact, it's the most nostalgic sounding music I've heard in a modern game. This soundtrack is just as good as Dracula X's. Yeah, I did just say what you think I said, and I'm not taking it back. Some people may feel like I'm being too easy on FX Unit Yuki, and that I'm understating the lack of challenge or inventive level design. I have two things to say in response to that. First of all, it's an indie game made for a 30-year-old console with crowdfunding. On the one hand, it would be condescending to judge a game by lower standards simply because it's an indie project, and I'm sure the development team were all talented professionals. But say, for comparison, if someone did a serious review of Castlevania 1 and criticized it for having bad graphics, that would reveal a complete lack of understanding of what context the game was made under, and you probably wouldn't give their opinion much credence. So forming an opinion about Yuki has been a balancing act of looking objectively at the final product while acknowledging the limitations a project like this has. Perhaps more importantly is the fact that FX Unit Yuki is a PC Engine CD game. Why should that matter, you might be asking? It matters because, particularly in Japan, the entire selling point of the PC Engine was that it could provide an encompassing sensory experience and that lent itself to a certain type of game structure which became prominent on the console. For the first time in the console market, games weren't only about action. They were supposed to bring you into a universe with a storyline, animated sequences, 
CD quality music, and relatable characters. The goal of games from this era was to pull you into their universe, making you feel like you were on an adventure and then becoming the protagonist for the game parts. Due to this, action and shooting games didn't always have the kind of precision you would find on, say, the NES. Once you understand this, it becomes apparent that FX Unit Yuki actually does an excellent job of replicating the feeling of playing a Japanese video game from the 90s. It truly is an authentic PC Engine CD experience, and to my knowledge, the most complete game made for an old console in the modern era. Is FX Unit Yuki an amazing action game? No, it's an okay action game. But it is an excellent PC Engine game. And as someone who's spent the last two decades exploring the console's library, that's what I was hoping for. So, Yuki has earned her place alongside all the other classic PC Engine games on my shelf. And I hope we get the opportunity to see her in another adventure someday.